Bandai NFL Zone for 4 for 4 SciTech, where we tackle four hot SciTech stories in four minutes or so. First, there are reports that women are leaving the tech industry in droves. Katie, why do you think this is? Well, there have been some gender discrimination cases recently, and I think those should absolutely be taken seriously. Mm -hmm. But I also don't think any industry needs to be 50-50 because I don't think the applicants are 50-50. I took engineering courses in college, and let me tell you, it was mostly men in my class. And so to me, that just says, at my school at least, that more mm -hmm. men were interested in becoming engineers. Yeah, I think the, uh, the ironic thing here is that women played a really vital role in the, in the creation of computers when, they, when it first started, right? Mm -hmm. And so over time, that's really, um, I guess, just transitioned to, uh, to being lopsided the entire, entirely other way. And, uh, and so, I, I mean, balance is something that you need just for perspective. And, uh, and quite frankly, yeah, they help build these things. They should uh, continue mm -hmm. to, uh, to sort of build on that. I think. James? My fear is that you know, th there could be a big talent pool. Well, there is a big talent pool out there that's yeah. being lost. And it's part of it is through kind of recruitment and women getting interested in tech, but also a lot about women who are already in the industry. Like, you know, what do we do for you yeah. know, so working moms? How do we kind of well, in there? The next generation is really going to be the ones to make the change. And we are seeing this with nonprofits, the UN. They're really trying to target women to get into the tech field early. We're talking more in high school, more in college, and majoring in, like you said, engineering. A company wants to grow clothing in a lab from bovine stem cells. Michael, is this a mad scientist at work here or a completely brilliant idea? Okay, so in our latest issue uh, of Popular Science, we profiled a woman named Suzanne Lee, and she's basically taken a look at clothing and said, for the past 100 years, we've used the same processes to make uh, clothing. A lot of it's cotton-based, right? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so not only are there more efficient ways to make clothing by growing it in a lab, which is, uh, produces less pollutants, but you can actually create better clothing. So there are things that are able to react to your body temperature. They can heal over time. And, uh, and while these things sound like they're pulled out of science fiction, um, they're really not that far away. So your clothing is alive in some ways? <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Yeah, clothing made from bacteria. I think this just takes hipsters to a whole new level, but I think it's exciting. My favorite part was that it could potentially self-clean itself, so I wouldn't have to do laundry anymore. I mean, that would be great. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic story. I mean, I love as well the fact that the company that's involved in this, Modern Meadows, is based in Brooklyn, so you've kind of got a little uh, fashion, you've got technology. It's awesome. Also, we're, we're saving animals from being slaughtered. I mean, that's, that's one positive. PETA just went two thumbs up. A thousand-year-old mummified monk reveals more of its secrets. So what do we learn from this mummy, James? It's like another day, another mummified monk story. There's so <laughs> much interest in these. You know, there was one a few weeks ago that was found in Mongolia. Yes. This is actually inside a statue that's kind of doing the rounds in some um, European museums. And basically, I spoke to the curator of archaeology who was mm -hmm. involved in this. And they did a CT scan on it recently, with, um, which is one of, one of a few that they've done, and an endoscopy. So they found more things of what's actually inside the monk. They're looking to maybe do a 3D life-size version of the monk. It's kind of gross but awesome at the same Weren't time. Weren't there Chinese writings or That's right. Poetry? They found some Chinese script but they don't, I don't think they know what's on it yet because mm -hmm. it was just purely done yeah. kind of through these small endoscopies. So it's really, really interesting. It is. If I ever discover a mummy unexpectedly, you will definitely hear me <laughs> scream. But I think this is interesting historically. It makes me wonder if there are other mummies inside statues. And I also think it's interesting because Egypt did some similar stuff. It makes me wonder if they were communicating mm -hmm. in some way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think you're both exactly right. You know, it, it gets me to think about sort of what else is hiding right underneath our noses, right? Like, <laughs> ah, I know there's so much to go with there. There's a thousand secrets over a thousand years. There's a new YouTube app for kids to help weed out what's suitable for young children. Will this start a new trend for digital content, Katie? Apparently, there are bad things on the internet. Oh, Who knew? Really? <laughs> but this is just the latest effort with Google. They're going to be doing a lot more to try to keep the internet more kid friendly. Mm -hmm. uh, we also saw Vine released an app earlier this month called Vine Kids. Snapchat has Snap Kids. There's a lot of effort in this space, and we're going to have a lot more content for teaching kids as well, learning content, mm -hmm. educational. As a parent, like, I can only just applaud this, you know, and it might be a bit of time before my daughter is kind of getting hold of my phone, kind of looking on YouTube, but I think it's great. And, you know, I'm surprised that it's taken them this long to do this, but as Katie says, like, Google's got so much content, and I think it's awesome now that they're kind of, like, corralling it into certain sections that are appropriate for kids. Right. Yeah, I mean, James said it exactly right. You know, I'm surprised that it's taken this long for Google to do this. Uh, you know, YouTube brings kids in by the droves, and, uh, and, and a lot of the most popular channels are clearly 
driven by um, children that are in their teenage uh, years and, and younger. So, uh, so you know, I think the fit is pretty obvious, and I can only imagine this is a home run for Google. Right, a good way to protect the kids. That's what we think. Tell us what you think with the hashtag 444.